Interested in learning some top secret Notion tips and tricks from two seasoned Notion template creators? The Organized Notebook is run by two passionate Notion creators with over four years of experience. We'd love to share some of our secret Notion tips and tricks that you can immediately start implementing into your own workspaces and templates. If you find this video useful, be sure to like, subscribe, and click the notification bell. So the first secret we wanted to share with you is synced block navigation. So what this is, is basically a navigation system that you can just copy and paste into all of the parts of your workspace or pages so that everything is always connected. So let's say that we have a page inside of here. So let's say that this is a page that is an about me. And we also have contacts. social media, and so on. So if you were kind of creating a system where you had a bunch of links in your page and you could do something like navigation and put a divider under it, and then you could even turn this into heading three so that it's bigger. So then you can just highlight this all like this, and then you could right click it and look for synced block and everything inside here is now inside of a synced block. So when you don't hover it, you don't really notice that it's a sync block, but when you hover out of it, you'll notice that it's pretty clean like this. So let's actually go ahead and put this sync block inside of the about me page. So if we just go ahead and click here, you can now copy link to the block. And then let's say that we wanted to add the navigation right here, you can paste and sync. So now if we change this navigation bar to something like this, all my pages, if we go back to the main page, now we can see that this also has been edited. So it's just easy to go around. So let's say that we are going to go to our contacts page here and we can paste in the sync block here again. And then we could go to about me contacts. So you can easily move from page to page this way, which could be really useful when implemented inside of your templates. So the next trick we have for you is navigation buttons. And this is actually one of our new recent favorites that we've been using quite a lot inside of our templates. And what this is, is that you can easily create buttons that sort of mimic the way that web pages work. So let's say that we have, again, an about me page here, about me, and you want a button here that's going to return you back to the home page. So let's say that this is your home page and you want to add a button going back here. So then you could do slash button and you could choose a icon that resembles a house so that it's very clear. And you could even name this return home. And what you need to do is add a step to open the page. And you want to open the navigation buttons page and you want to open it in full page. So by doing this, you basically have a navigation button that returns home. So let's click it and it goes back here. So you can really play around with this. For example, if you had a step-by-step -step instructions, you could even have a button that goes to the next page. So all you really need to do is keep track of the title of the page and make sure to set it up here in this slot right there. So the next thing that we use very often is callout boxes for menus. So how to do that is to type slash callout. And then what we like to do to make it look more menu-like is to change this icon into something with lines. So you can find it easily like this. And then we will probably name it something like menu and we will bold it. And then under here, you can start adding pages. So for example, slash page and you could name this one resources and even add an icon for folder like this and if you see here it's going to pop out but you can easily put it back into the menu 
and you have your first item in your menu and you can just keep adding new things inside here so it would look something like this if you have more and this looks particularly nice when you do full, small text full width and you add two columns so if we do two columns and we move this to the left hand side and we make it a bit smaller on this side so then this whole side is free for you to add things that are relevant for your notion page so this next one is the table of contents and this is something that we had overlooked for a while while we were using Notion, but it's been really helpful now that we've gotten used to how to use the table of contents. So for example, table of contents is gonna show you all of your headings text. So let's say that we have here heading three and we have a calendar and we like to do dividers under headings just to make it look nicer. And then we have another calendar view database. That's a new database. And let's say that we have another table here and we have heading three for this as well and slash divider. And let's put a table view database like this. So now we have a table and a calendar. And since we have to scroll like this, it can be nice if you put a table of contents. So now we can put something like slash table of contents and you'll easily be able to go to calendar as well as table immediately. So the more sections that you have in your page, this could come really handy. But one problem is that if you add, for example, a heading here, it's going to automatically show up in the table of contents. So if you put a table of contents heading, it's not going to work. So instead, what we do is what we showed before, which is to add a call out box and then we can put the table of contents inside of the call out box and make a menu this way. So this is another thing that we've been using quite a lot, especially recently. So we'll make a call out box and then put the table of contents inside, which then links to the various sections in a really clean way. So this next secret is something that is a little bit hidden. So if you have a gallery view database and you type slash gallery, there's actually an option to make your cover photo your file upload property photo. So what this means is that let's say that we click here and we add a property, which is files and media. So if you upload a photo here, it's going to show up as the cover photo, but you just have to make sure to set it up correctly. So we have to go to the three dots here and then we can go to layout. And now that we've added that property for files and media, you should be able to see the card preview now shows files and media. So by doing this, if you upload a photo in here, it's going to actually show that image in the cover photo. So let's just try it out. So we just uploaded one of our template photos here and let's see if it works. And now it works. You can even reposition it like this so that you can choose how you want it to look. But this is quite a cool feature, especially if you're uploading a bunch of photos to your properties and you want that to be the main picture. This could be sort of a secret that you might not know about. The next tip we have for you is to hide the name on gallery view, especially if you're looking for sort of a clean aesthetic look where you want the photo to be sort of the main thing on your page. Then you'll want to do slash gallery and we'll just do new database and we'll go ahead and add the cover photo as the card preview. So page cover and let's just put a bunch of pictures in here already. So these are just photos randomly from Unsplash and let's say that we just want to only see the photos here. So we want to remove these names underneath it. Then you could go to the three dots here and then we'll go to properties and simply hide the name. So this is a little bit unintuitive at first, but it's quite nice if you have sort of a photo gallery that you want to display. So it looks really nice this way. 
The next tip we have for you is to store your databases, your original databases inside a callout box and keep them there so that you don't accidentally delete them. So what we like to do, especially inside templates where we might have multiple databases is to create a callout box and we'll call this databases and we'll bold it and we'll even put something like do not delete, especially if it's for a template that we know that someone might duplicate and not know quite how to use yet. And once we have that, then we can start adding databases. So we tend to add databases as pages first. So we're going to do slash page. And let's say that we want a table database here, table view. And if we go back, we can just simply drag them in like this. And let's say that we next have a page for calendar. And we can go like this, plus new database. And then what we'll do is instead of using a direct database here, we're going to simply link them by using slash linked view of database. And we can link view of the calendar like this, as well as slash linked view of the table. And this ensures that if you delete these, it doesn't really have an effect on your data, which is stored inside of here. So it's just easier to know where exactly your databases are. And often cases we will do small text full width, and we may even do two columns here and move this onto the right hand side and move this do not delete on the somewhere on the left hand side so that it doesn't get deleted. And the final tip if you're using this method is as you can see, it's going to always show this like this so that you can sort of click here and go to that database that it's linked to. And we will usually click on the three dots here and go to layout and then toggle off show database title just so that it looks cleaner this way. And you can always put your own headings and so on. So any changes you make in this linked view is just going to simply be reflected in this calendar on the left hand side, but just don't delete this one. And this ensures that we really have our data safe. This next secret or tip is slightly more advanced, but it basically is how to make a relational progress bar. So this is a scenario that often happens if you want to sort of track your progress in something that has two databases. So let's say that we have slash database, a table view database here. And let's say that we have slash database, a table view database here. And one is your goals. And these are the tasks relating to your goals that you need to accomplish. So in that case, what you can do is now add a relation here. And we can relate it to the tasks and also show on tasks, add relation. So let's say you have a goal of reading one book. And tasks are read chapter one, read chapter two read chapter three, and let's just add one more, read chapter four. So what we wanna do is to tag all of these with the same goal. So we're just reading one book and you can actually just drag it like this if you wanna copy that. And now we see all of our tasks in here as well. So it's linked like this. And let's say that you want to now make a progress bar here so we could do something with a checkbox so if we have a checkbox like this you can check it off when you're done with the task and then what we want to do is actually to create a formula and we're going to edit the formula so we want to do tasks and we can do like this dot filter current dot and by doing current, it's going to take whatever is going through here at the moment, which is the task. And we want to see if the checkbox is equal to true and dot length. So now we can calculate how many is true. And we're going to divide that 
by tasks dot length and done and now we want to have a percentage and a bar so now if we check it off it's gonna start to calculate it like this and this is a really nice way to use progress bars and to sort of show relational properties and their progress so just to show the formula again it looks something like this This next secret is a trick that is quite simple to use, but many people might not realize that it exists. So if we go slash table view, and let's say that you have a table view that is super long. So it has a bunch of different properties here. So let's just keep adding properties. So eventually it's really hard to see the name which could be really useful as you're going through the table view. So we'll even add some more. So now the name is completely hidden from the left-hand side and you have to sort of scroll like this. So instead of that, you can actually just click here and just simply hit the freeze up to column here. And what that does is that once you hit the side, it's gonna keep the name here so you can always see that while you scroll. So this is a really good trick for table view databases. The next tip we have for you is to use quotes as a vertical divider. So this is really useful, for example, if you're trying to create a Cornell node system and so on. So the first thing you'll have to do is to make two columns. So we're going to do slash column. And now we have two sides. So we can make the vertical divider on the right hand side if you want to split it in two. And all you have to do is type slash quote and Basically just keep typing enter, but you have to do shift enter in order for this line to keep going longer and longer. And you can adjust the length of this by moving it around like this. And then for example, if you're writing your notes, you could have your main topics on this side and your notes on this side, for example. And the cool thing about this one is that you can actually just click here and you can choose different notion colors so if you want it like green notion color or if you wanted to change the whole thing into gray background and so on it's also possible so if you want a style that really matches notions color scheme using quotes as a vertical divider could be very useful we hope some of these were new to you. Let us know which of these secret tips and tricks were the most useful. If you have any questions, comments, or anything that was confusing in this video, feel free to let us know, and we hope to see you in the next video.